thank you thank you thank you so much dr karima jain who is the resource person of today and who is an iit madras graduate who had made a success story by creating a handcrafted natural soap lotions and lip balm products and this has been now registered in the united states of america and uh, who is a success story as far as the internet has been concerned and we are very fortunate to have you and so that you are talking to us today dr lindu arapat the convener of the ed club and all my faculty members and students who will be very keen and who will be listening to uh, dr gerima jain who will be sharing with us the success story today dear friends today in this evening though we have showers heavy showers in kerala uh, perhaps around your house uh, today we will be having a wonderful talk i would say talk by dr gerima jain iit madras graduate who would be speaking to us about how we has to start uh, startup entrepreneurs uh, and how we has to become successful as far as our creative initiatives has to be concerned i place my appreciation to his daughter lindu alapat who has arranged this talk i also specially thank dr kirima jain who taken time to speak to the young i would say uh, emerging uh, i would say entrepreneurs uh, who would be liking to be like you dr gerima could be also having dreams like you would be eager to hear from you for coming to our college i would say through this webinar in a special manner uh, dear students of ed club this is a wonderful opportunity for you to get yourself inspired i would say to get you as a motivated by the real life story of i would say someone who he is being heard in the digital media in a wonderful way so get you as a inspired by the story have a wonderful evening everyone thank you thank you so much thank you thank you father now we are moving on to the main session for kind information of the participants if you have any doubts during the presentation please type them on the chat box or unmute yourself and raise your doubts now without further ado we will turn over to our resource person dr garima jain iit madras graduate turned entrepreneur founder of raga naturals she is settled in us and her company is registered there please stay tuned for interesting story of starting to make a new product for her son as it goes necessity is the mother of in in invention we invite you to listen to the interesting story of an inventor mother who made a difference for many over to you ma'am wow well, what a great introduction thank you so much christ college and thank you dr jolly andrews thank you so much linto for having me here it's so good to be talking to such a young crowd and it's so good to be here on this platform so now as we all are here i would like to share my journey and story with you we at raga naturals are focused on bringing natural high quality and affordable skin care for the whole family now i want you to remember these keywords because we will be covering it towards the end of the talk before i start let me ask you a question what comes to your mind when you hear the word entrepreneur or entrepreneurship let me tell you it is the coolest thing in the world you are the owner of a company you are in my case i am the queen of my time i can sleep i can wake up at whatever time i want i can go on vacation wherever or whenever i would like to i don't have to deal with a boss now doesn't it sounds very realistic or doesn't it sounds like 
exactly what you read on at, uh, or see at Instagram or Facebook about cool entrepreneurs driving luxury cars and living in big houses. Let me tell you the reality. It is not the reality. Honestly, being an entrepreneur or starting your own company is the most uncool job in the world. You sleep with one problem, then you wake up with another. When the whole world goes on for vacation, especially in my case, it is the busiest time for me in the world because that's when people you know, are buying lots of products to give as a gift to their friends and family. An entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, you have to just keep fiddling and managing time around various teams, family, and in my case, my kids. You just sit on the chair at, at the screen, trying to solve a problem. And by the time you come to the, you find some sort of solution to the problem, another one starts. It doesn't matter you have a boss or not. Because here in this job, you are the marketing person, you are the advertising specialist, you are the PR team, you are the salesman, you are the cook, you are the cleaner, you are the dishwasher. You are basically everything doing, working here. So now you must be wondering, if I knew all these things, why am I still in this mess? So I will answer this thing in three parts. Why, what, and how. For that, let me tell you my story. So as um, Linto and Dr. Jolly Andreas mentioned, I have a PhD in biotech and I have two, two passions, science and living a chemical free lifestyle. And I'm very particular about both of them. When I was doing a postdoc and was very happy with my research life, the connection between biotech and lotion came to reality and I had my first child. He had extremely dry skin. So technically we call it eczema. It is a very common skin condition here. Uh, it could be due to weather control environment or several allergies or kids just have it. We tried many lotions and creams suggested by friends and families and doctors. And we tried to rule out all the allergies, all the possible allergies we could have but you know, nothing was working for him except steroid cream. And that's how eczema or any dry skin condition is treated. Just put steroid creams on it till the condition subsides and wait for as long as it can sustain. So one day while I was looking for some new cream for him to try, I started looking at the ingredients, like reading the ingredients. To my surprise, most of the creams have around 30 or more ingredients, different ingredients in it, which are almost similar in various brands. They are very scientific and extremely complicated. I couldn't justify using them on my three month old child. So then the inner scientist of this super cool mom woke up. I started in depth study and try to understand the science behind bath and body products. And, you know, started creating my own from the scratch using basic and necessary ingredients. So I was at maternity leave. I just had the work to take care of my child and be at home and eat. And then I'm a trained microbiologist. So, you know, everything just came together and I started trying out various recipes and making proper formulations of creams. I do understand the importance of good manufacturing practices. So, you know, during those times, we used to live in a two bedroom apartment. So we converted one bedroom as a laboratory and nobody was allowed to enter in the, in, in, in the room without proper permission. After a few iterations in formulations, my cream literally gave instant relief to my son. So at some point, some point of time, he used to scratch till it bleed. And this is honestly, this is how eczema starts and is there in a lot of kids. But after he started using that cream, it just disappeared. And that was a very proud moment for us. 
we started giving that cream to friends and family and we saw good results in them. They loved it. And on, when they like refused to take it for free, we started a company. I mean, that's a funny way to say, but you know, we did give it to a lot of people, received good feedback. We found a market fit and we took, a, we took up on the challenge and used the opportunity. So that was how we started. Now comes the question, what, what, what we did to make it a reality. So when we were happy and satisfied with the product, so of course we created a few more products after that, because you know, once you get this, this thing that you can remove chemicals from um, a particular product and you can create something which you have vision for, you just don't, you can't stop. So then we created many more products for it, created soaps, lip balms. We finalized the packaging and labels. And um, the most important thing, then, ca they, then came the business part. So then we researched the key pain points in the skincare markets, the market, and we addressed those in our product and our branding. So the first thing, you re remember, I asked you to remember the four key points of our brand identity. So the first thing is natural. We removed complex chemicals from the bath and body products and we replaced them with their natural counterparts. We also stick to our principle of minimalism. So our products, they don't have more than 13 ingredients in it. Maximum is 13. And most of them are uh, various various oils and butters and the names which you can relate to. Our lip balms are so pure, some of them you can put it on bread and eat and they will, you'll be fine. The second thing is high quality. Since beginning, I am very particular about the source of our ingredient. Though we have a manufacturer uh, uh, tie up with an FD approved lab who manufacture our products for us, um, still they have to stick to the source which we have recommended to them. Our products are quite affordable. So most of the natural, we, we, we during our market research, we saw that most of the natural skincare market is very high end. The prices are extremely high. So we bought natural for middle-class moms and middle-class families like me who can use it on their family throughout the year and who can essentially afford it. And the most important thing was for the whole family. Now, I never understand why should men, women, and kids in the same house should be using different skincare. It is a very basic necessity. And we address this problem. So our motto is, if your kid can use it, so can you. And for that, you know, we, uh, um, we also try to stick with uh, very unisex fragrances so that you know both men and women can use it. However, going forward, we realize that one of our best-selling product is actually, or one of the best-selling uh, category of products are actually fragrance-free. So we incorporated all this market intelligence in our products, in our marketing strategies, and we launched it. Now. That was what we did. Now comes how. So in the beginning, it was mostly word of mouth. We did a lot of pop-up events in the local markets because you know it was very important to see how is the product fitting into market? How does people like it? What is their reaction? Our local market events were very successful because we got very good amount of repeat customers from them. Then we reached out to influencers, asked them to, to spread good word about our product, of course, if they like it. I'm a very true believer of connecting to the customer. So if you have a product that you trust in, that you believe in, you can be the best person to sell it to others or to show your vision to others. And I love to do that. So, you know, as we, through social media, um, through local uh, market events, started connecting to the customers, sharing our passion, and 
we found many like-minded people. So now, currently we are on, um, we have our own website, which is doing good. We are also at multiple online marketplaces like Walmart and um, Amazon. And we are serving thousands of customers and their families. So after so many negative, uncool, stressful, and depressive situations, why should one still choose the path of entrepreneurship? Or the question comes, what makes a successful business adventure different than a less successful one? The answer is, it's one's passion. The first thing, if you believe in yourself, if you believe in the product that you have created, it could be anything. It could be a physical product. It could be a software. It could be a food item. If you believe in it, be ready to show it to the world. Be ready to show and share your vision to the world and just follow your heart. And you know, the biggest motivation comes when people reply you back with their feedbacks, with their reviews, and they tell you how much your products have changed their life. And that becomes the key moment which keeps you going. And that's true for any, any startup. So I won't take much of your time and let's shoot up some questions. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now participants can raise their questions to me. Ma'am, I would like to start uh, by myself. So my question is, what uh, would you, uh, uh, what would you say to the young entrepreneurs? Like, what are tips? Tips would you give to them, to the young entrepreneurs who wish to come to this industries? So see. If you want to start a company, you have to first be true to yourself. You have to understand what you like and what you are really passionate about. As I, as I mentioned in the beginning of my, my talk, so it is not a very cool thing to do really because you don't know when you, when you will be paid. You don't know how much you will be paid. There's no control of time. You might have to work 24 hours. There's no limit. You might have to invest everything in it. So, you know, passion and, and a vision is the most important thing. So if you, if you be true to yourself, figure out what you want to do and be ready and see if you can show your vision to others, then people will definitely buy it. And do a good background market research about like, where does the product fit in the market? And how do you fit in the market? and make a story around it, a nice story, and just go out and experiment. So you, you guys still are very young. You have, I started when I already had a kid and some liabilities, but you guys go around, experiment with it. And you never know, you could start the next Facebook or Google. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Garima, may I ask you something? Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I had uh, gone through the uh, gone through your website and also the Amazon your uh, seller details, you know, and I've seen that exceptionally good writing for the product that you deliver. So actually, that was another moment I found it really amazing, you know, that you have started something within such a short span. You've got all five star rating for most of the products, and it is very well accepted among the uh, among the bias. So that is a very good thing. And I do want to congratulate you on this platform here now. And uh, to my uh, point, uh, to what I wanted to ask that you when you started this, actually, you started uh, this uh, as a fa passion or as a hobby for your child or as a necessity for your child. And what made you the uh, like uh, courage to bring it or bring it up a business scale, you know, industrial scale, because you have to invest a lot, especially when you are in US, 
uh, or in other country, you have to depend on other services to get it going and things on. So I, I understand that it involves a lot of you know, effort and money also. So what, at what point you made the bet that, okay, let's go for it. Is it customer review or is it your own, you know, like desire to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, so, you know, that's a, that's a very good question. So as you said, it's true that I started it as a hobby and I was just looking for a solution for my own family. But honestly, the leap from a hobby to a, a business came from the reviews and demand in the market. Though I was like, a, I don't know if I talked to you about it. I never thought of starting a company earlier. I was so happy in research, wanted to be a scientist, live happily <laughs> ever after. But, you know, like, when you have a product and you see that there are customers for it, there is a gap in the market which you can fill. Then it's not wise to sit back and just see the show. You have to be there. So as I, as I mentioned uh, during my small talk, why we started it and how we did the market research. So we clearly saw that there are, though there are many brands which sell natural um, handcrafted products, but their message was not very clear. Number of ingredients is really very high in there as well. And the products are not very effective. Even if they are effective, very diluted, they just doesn't work. The creams are like milk. They are so thin that they are not effective at all. So we saw a demand in the market and the leap from hobby to entrepreneur or to starting a company, it came really from the customer feedback. When people said that this is the product, you know, when I, in, in the beginning, when we were still in, in the phase of trial and error that we were not sure if it's worth giving time and money to start a business. We had some friends who came by, tell him it's okay. If you don't want to start it as a business, don't do it, but just make enough so that we can buy it. We can take it from you. And we had, this is not just the one experience we had, but we had many of people who came us to just say, it's okay if you don't want to start it as business, but just don't stop making it. <laughs> so, you know, that was, as you mentioned, that was correctly the push we got from the feedback and the customer reviews that we needed to start it as a company. That's and even time. so even even till date like we have extremely low return rate uh even um, at our online so you know here at, at walmart or at amazon you can return within 30 days a product you just use it return it no questions asked so this is how it goes in us um we have extremely low return rates we have extremely low negative feedback feedback rate and we have very high repeat customer rate so, you know, this all gives a sort of confidence about the products that you have. Like sometimes, you know, this is again a problem. We, when we try to start a company, we as a young entrepreneurs, a startup, we make that we all, we just see the positive of our product. We just, our brain just try to ignore the negatives, which might come by. And uh, that lead us to waste a lot of time. But, you know, the feedback of unknown customers who you have never met and when they write your emails about uh, uh, how their product, your, your product is helpful for them or their family. People say, you know, this is the only lotion we have ever been able to use on um, our skin. I want to read a few reviews. Um, I actually, this was a part of my talk as well, but um, so like people have written to us that this is the first lotion I've been able to use in a long time because of skin issues, gratefully to find this lotion. And then um, another customer, they, they shared that works phenomenally and at 98% natural, I'm grateful. Heal my hands almost overnight from dry, painful skin. And someone else uh, wrote, this stuff is great, even better than it looks. The scent is lovely, not overpowering, and I find it relaxing. I often apply it, short, uh, it shortly before bed for this reason. My husband detests perfume, but he doesn't mind the lavender. It even makes my skin feel soft and hydrated. So, you know, when um, you read such reviews and feedback from people, people write personal emails to you, it feels awesome. And it feels like it's worth pursuing it. 
that's truly very motivating actually i also wanted to ask like i i have seen you working in the lab late in the night and you enjoy being a researcher and how about what do you think now like you can't go back to lab and work as a researcher as such but you are an inventor now so how do you feel or what is the which position do you like the most as a researcher or as a yeah so i tell you right now i'm not even an inventor my current state is a sales person i am okay. it's just a sales guy but so you see creating a product is different it it took in in my case i was the one who created the product but you, there are companies who can how you can hire if you have a vision you can hire somebody to make something for you but yeah so creating a product is one thing but the most important thing as a business perspective is selling the product so in today's world we it's it's not like we sit at a place and customer come to us and we talk to them and we sell it like it used to happen you know in earlier days when there was shops and physical shops and people would tell hey this is the best thing you can try it and use it right now it's all online so you have to make an online image image very similar or very exact to what your product is and then that image sells so ultimately the whole thing comes down to the digital marketing and online selling the product so yeah that's that's my job is right now i just sit and stare at a screen do nothing and i talk to my marketing team hey i don't like this 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 marketing campaign you are running change it and i talk to somebody and like we need some more product start the manufacturing process and we need more labels we need a little different rebranding so you know it ultimately it comes down to right my my current state is mostly a sales person and somebody who just you know run around and see different teams i hope i answered your question yes thank you very much anna you may ask any other questions if those who have any have, having any question you may type uh, type it in the chat box also Ma'am, ma'am, do you spend uh, more investment on your uh, promotional activities? That's my question, ma'am. Do you? So, yes. So, as, as I said, yeah, right. Uh, as, as I just, you know, mentioned that everything is online right now. So, the, 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 this is another thing, you know. Uh, i think a lot of young entrepreneurs they make this mistake which even i am guilty of making if we have a product and we believe this is the best product in the world we just sit back and we wait that our customer will come to come to us and like the from the whole world they they will search us and they will come to us and buy the product from us but honestly that's not true there are thousands and like millions of skincare companies out there in the world so ultimately the burden comes to us to reach out to our ideal customer to reach out to our client and tell them hey we have something that you might need and we would love if you'll try it and to make that happen we we have to focus very specifically and aggressively on the online campaigns and online promotions because you know as i said that is the only way to reach to your customer if you go and type lotion at amazon or at any website thousands of lotion will come up how will you decide that which is a good lotion or which is a bad lotion or maybe if you are trying to buy some some t-shirt the moment you type t-shirt on online platform thousands of t-shirts will come up you only see like 15 or 20 t-shirts on the first page but there are t-shirts which goes to 100 pages and do you ever have a, a time or energy to see the 100 page no one so the people who stay at the 100 page they don't get any customer attention at all so your goal is to come at the first page at the top not even at the 15 from 1 to 5 and then it you will be having a better opportunity and a better chance to reach to your ideal customer which otherwise would have bought something else so if i have to reach to my customer my strategy has to be spending more time effort and energy on online promotions 
Thank you, ma'am. Uh, there is a question in the chat box. Could you please reach it out. Yes. So, what would be some what would be some of the mistakes and difficulties that young entrepreneurs should look out for in the current situation, especially promoting the product? This is a very good question because you know I made most of them. I made all the mistakes possibly there will be in mention in any of the book. So let me tell you. The first mistake, which let me start with myself. The first mistake which which we made is to wait for the ideal product. So I spent so much of energy and uh, effort in the beginning to make the product like the best. And I was trying to make it the best without even trying to, to sell it. So you see the problem was, I, 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 I didn't have any feedback loop then. So there was nobody to tell me this is the best or not, but I was still trying to make it better. And it, it wasted some time, crucial time, it, and it wasted a lot of money as well. So the first thing is, if you have a product, test it out. Let people tell you, let your ideal customer tell you if it works or not. So the market actually is very efficient. If they don't like their, your product, they will not even spend five, five rupees for it. And if they like your product, they will, sp they will spend more than 100 rupees for the same thing. So the one thing is to wait for the pers per, uh, perfection. I even waited, you know, I even wasted in the beginning, I remember when I was starting, I wasted a lot of time to get the perfect labels because I was just not happy with the labels we had. And now when I, no, no, really, like, <laughs> I didn't like the white background, the labels or something, <laughs> and I wanted it to be the perfect. We tried, we tried um, even getting watercolor artists to meet the labels. We tried different gra graphic designers and so many things. And then we figured out at the end, I'm done, just launch it and we'll see. And we launched one product soon. We just did a rebranding and then the labels were really, very nice. So, you know, you get market intelligence, people give you feedback and uh, uh, it somehow works. The second thing is to make a product and to not worry about customers. So it doesn't work that way. You have to know who your ideal client is. So when you have a product, you cannot sell it to everyone because, you know, there's a limitation. You always have, even I think Jeff Bezos has a limitation that he cannot, you know, go and promote to each and every person. So you have to, find your niche. You have to narrow down your ideal, ideal customers and you have to market your product to them. Marketing anyways, online, or if you want to go and talk to them, it has to be narrowed down. Narrow it down, figure out who would be the first person to buy your product, go and spend your money and energy on them. So this is the, 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 the second thing. Um, and then next thing is, Never lose touch with your ideal customer. So, or the people, just keep talking about your product to different people from different areas because you never know how and when people give you suggestions that you can incorporate and make it much more, much better. Also like collaborating among different disciples is very important. So try to collaborate with different people, try to join a lot of uh, entrepreneurship seminars, talk to as many people as you want. The connections really help you a lot in going and moving forward. So yeah, these are some things which I can think of right now. And I made all those mistakes really, so learn from it. <laughs> Karima, what do you think the difference between uh, India and US in terms of uh, bringing up an order, uh, like a startup, you know? Uh, what do you think? Is it, do you find it more easier there or, you know, which one do you, how, what's your opinion on this? So I don't have experience in, in um, having a startup in India. So I cannot really directly compare, but I can tell here, people are more open in trying new products. So people, if you have a very consistent story and if you have a background to prove that story, so for example, let's see in my case, I call it self-branding. So I sell a product by selling a part of my story. And people, people believe in it because 
I have a degree, I have a motivation, and I have a reason to do that. And people really appreciate that effort and they like to try new things. And they are very honest about it. So if they like it, they will write about it. So that I think that makes it a little bit maybe easier to have a company here, but I don't know how it is in India right now. So I, I think I am not the right person to, to do a very direct you know, comparison in that case. But in India, startup culture is actually growing so well. There, there's a lot of funding from government for young entrepreneurs. So that's something you can definitely look into. Thank you. And we have Next one students. more question in chat box. Could you please? Yeah. yeah. So please tell us about how to treat our fear inside and move on with our ideas. So see, my mom always used to tell me this thing. If you try out something, the chances of success is chances of success and, and failure is 50-50. But if you don't try out something, you are 100% failure. So that is how I see in this case as well. If you have an idea and you have the resources to do it, go for it. There is, there, there, there is no harm in trying it out. At the end, you will get some experience you will make some new friends and you will have some more connections and you will have a learning that will help you to pursue next idea. It's always good to try and test out your idea than to just sit back, you know, and think, what if I would have done it? So recently, you know, I, I, I read and um, I, I heard an interview by Jeff Bezos. He was at uh, a very reputed firm in the beginning. He and his wife, they were doing a very, nice handsome job and uh, when he had this idea of starting amazon he talked to his boss who was also like his his friend so he talked to his boss and he shared his idea and his boss said you know your idea is good but what if it didn't work out and you have a nice job here why do you want to leave this job and to try out something which is unknown it was a difficult call for him to to leave a very good paid job or to start amazon he said, I thought about it and I thought in 30 years, I don't want to sit on a chair and think what if I would have Amazon, I, I would have started a company like Amazon and what would it have been? So that was the, the bet he took. That was a risk it, he took to, uh, to leave his company and to start Amazon and to see what happens. You always have your skill set. Nobody is stealing from you. You will always have your education with you. Nobody can take it away from you. Try it out. If it works, it's good. Doesn't try out. If it doesn't work, you will always have stories to share. So, you know, in any case, it's a, it's a very good step to try out your ideas. Ma'am, we have one more question on the chat box. What are different strategies that we use to build a brand? We used, honestly, a lot of strategies. We tried, we made a whole chart and we tried out every strategies and put like plus and minus in front of it. If it's working, if it's not working, how much money it took and how much results we got from it. So in my case, since we have a very, we have a physical product to sell, we, as I, as I uh, mentioned during my talk as well, uh, we, in the beginning, we tried out just giving it to friends and family and see how they like it. Honestly, brand build, building starts right from there. Brand building starts when you open your mouth for good or bad. So, you know, that, that, that was the first step. Then we, um, we registered our company and then we started doing um, local market events pop-up events to see how well is our product received in the market in front of unknown people. I was so scared that time. I didn't know. I was like, what if people just don't like it? And um, now when I think back, I'm like, at least we, we tried. What if they don't like it? They will not buy it again. That's, that's the maximum which can go wrong, right? 
film, uh, we did pop-up event, then, then we figured out that my main client is the people who are very concerned for their family. So not the teenagers because they just, you know, care about themselves at that particular point of time. So uh, we, we, we narrowed down our clientele and we figured out that moms are the best or ideal client for us because moms are responsible for ordering products for their whole families. They are the one extremely concerned about their children and try to use as natural products as possible. So I reached out to mommy influencers, mommy bloggers, and um, at Instagram to mommy groups and if, at Facebook mommy groups. So we reached out to them and sent our products to them as samples and asked them to use it. And we requested them if they like it, please write about us. And that gave us a huge boost because number one, it, it confirmed that they were our ideal, our ideal client. And number second, people listen to a, a, a feedback from a person they trust. So when they wrote about it, so, you know, it was like a, we, we saw a big surge in traffic at our website. The moment we reached out to an influencer, they, they posted, uh, uh, wrote a post about us, and then there was a big surge at the website. So we actually noticed those, those spikes in online traffic around that. So we did that. Then um, we are still continuing uh, on. And now everything is online. We don't have any more pop-up events or uh, local market events, but we are still reaching out to influencers, then um, digital marketing is one of the main key of, as well. But you see, everything is iterative. You you try something new, it doesn't work out, scale back. You try something new, if you see good result, push, take it a, a step forward. So it's, it's like always learning, even with different keywords, it's always learning you, which goes on. So some during some season, something is more popular during other season, something else strategy is more popular. So that's how, you know, in everything together, we, we make sure the four keywords, which I told you, like natural, minimalism, um, affordable, and for the whole family. So we try to push these whole keyword as our brand philosophy throughout all these channels. You're welcome. Uh, please see if there are any other questions. Else, uh, I think uh, we may conclude, isn't it, Anna? Yes, sir. So, if there are, if there is any more questions, you can post it on the chat box. Or else, we will move on to the last session. So, so I think that's the end of that session, sir. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, you ma'am, for your wonderful insights and for sharing your story. Now we are moving on to the last session. For that, I would like to invite Sankit Ramis, student coordinator of ED Club, to propose word of thanks. Sankit, over to you. Okay, good evening, everyone. I am Sangeet and I'm here to present the vote of thanks for today's webinar. I would like to thank our guest speaker, Dr. Garima Jain, for visiting us and enlightening, her, enlightening us with her knowledge. I would like to thank our principal, Reverend Father Jolly Andrews, CMI, our head of the department, Dr. Joshina Jose, and the faculty for letting us organize this webinar session. I, I want to thank the student committee who really worked hard to make this event successful. And I'm also thanking all the students present here for paying your attention and learning. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. And I'm so happy to be able to interact to such an informed and curious audience. It was really a true pleasure for me to be here. Thank you so much. Now it's thank really you, our honor. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So you. thank you, everyone. We appreciate being uh, you here. Once again, thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Okay, then.
Bye. Okay, then, Karima. Thank you very much. It Bye. is Thank actually you, rainy here uh, now and then. Uh, it was in our, since morning, early in the morning, it's a heavy rain. So maybe because of that, we have less number of students joined. But otherwise, I think they all uh, liked it. So very nice. Thank